Welcome back. Today we take a look at the tools that help you build cool things. Let's get started. All right, so this is my BF109, and I didn't just use Stormworks to build this. I used several tools, and we're going to go and check out those tools right now. All right, so the first thing we're looking at is the Fluffy Pony IDE for Stormworks, which lets you script Lua outside of Stormworks, test it, copy and paste it into Stormworks, and use your scripts in the game. So what's really cool about this is it has a lot of things like the monitor. You can actually use the monitor to go ahead and test what your output's going to be. It allows for some UI building here, so you can actually do your flip switch and all these good things right here where you can basically drag and drop. And let's go ahead and grab an example just to show you here. So we have a flight instruments. I think I have to copy this. I haven't used this too much, but we'll go ahead and copy it over here and paste it. All right, cool. And so now I've got that code for the altimeter. And if I hit start right here, it's going to run it. And we're running in a 32 by 32. So I think I want that to be a little bit bigger so we can see it. So here's a bigger monitor, and here is the altimeter that we drew right here. So we stopped the script. Let's get something else. And let's see here. Touch screen, push button, toggle. Let's see. Flight instruments, airspeed, heading overlay. General instruments by tangent. Ooh, let's see what that does. Go ahead and copy it in here. Paste it. And run it. Wow, those are nice looking. Look at that. And so it looks like these are by tangent. I haven't seen these before, but there you go. So you can go ahead and tweak these if you want, looking at the code over here, which I have no idea what it's doing. I have to hit stop. Uh, and you can look at the code and tweak it. It actually has some notes, which is nice. And then when you're, when you're done tweaking, you can go ahead and copy and paste this into Stormworks. Actually, we can do it just to show you. I'm going to go copy this and go in Stormworks. This is my ugly Lua tester here. So I'm just going to grab this, come in here. I don't know what this is, so we're going to delete delete that one. And we're going to grab this and delete that, whatever that was, and go ahead and paste it in and hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and update and spawn it. All right, let's go over here and see. So as you can see, we got the same output. We've got height, pressure, and temp. Wow, these are really nice looking dials. So there is a lot of things you can do with this. You want to check this out for yourself. The link is in the description. And you can also download it for your own use on your computer. So you don't have to run in the browser window online in case you're offline. And also it's worth noting that it has a minifier, which I think is still in beta testing, which tries to compress the code. So if you're running into the character limit of 4096, you can try by removing the line breaks and some of the other things and comments to get it to be smaller in character. So that's just something you do instead of trying to break up your scripts. So very cool tool, but he's not done yet. No, 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 Fluffy Pony has more. And so let's get to the next one. So the IDE is very cool for scripting, but what if you want to do something else like check out your vehicle stats or turn an image into Lua or an SVG into triangles or even create a badge? Well, that's where Pony has you covered. A Fluffy Pony, that is. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next thing, which is the Stormworks Analyzer. So if we click this right here, I'm going to go ahead and open up a vehicle. All right, I opened up the BF109E4. I'm going to go ahead and analyze it. And as you can see, we've got all the statistics of all the blocks we used, how many, uh, what the mass is, and you can get an idea of what is going on with your vehicle, how many numbers of bodies you have, which can cause frame rate problems if you have a lot of those, and the total mass number of logic connections probably is going to affect your frame rate there's a lot of those but can't help that in most cases and it also has down here all the colors you used on the model which is very cool the other alternative is the tangent tool which was the original one and as you can see if it loads it does roughly the same thing except it's giving you mainly the weight of the blocks and the count so if you want a little more detail you might want to use fluffy ponies if you just want to get a nice idea of the block count and weight tangents is quick and easy to use and all the links are of course in the description all right but what's next well we've got the image to lua and there's two of these as well this one is by fluffy pony of course so the idea here is to turn an image that you upload into a lua picture so let's grab an image all right so i selected an image i selected angela from the georgie's gal and if you can see now we have two scripts we've got what is this? It looks like, unfortunately, that the picture is way too big. So let's 
copy this really quick into Stormworks. So let's copy it in here and let's just see what this generates by itself. I think you had to make two blocks because it's so much code being generated and only half the picture is going to show up here. Let's see what happens. Okay, yep, there's half the picture. And then if we come back in here and grab the second script, add another little block, connect that to the video, and then just replace that code, and we should get the full picture. Now, this is probably not the best way to use this tool, but I'm just trying to show you really quick how you can convert an image and then get the full image size like that. So, very cool. And there is also another one. We can come over here to... So this is an older image to Lua convert, and this is by Penguin Zero. And the difference between these two is that you can pretty much upload any image you like here, and it'll give you some warnings on what it doesn't like, and try to convert it into a Lua script. And this one is very specific where it wants a BMP file, it wants it to be 8-bit, and it wants the colors to be indexed. It gives you a few more options of changing things, but those are the main differences, and so you may want to check both of these out and see which one fits your needs. All right, our next tool is what? So this next tool is probably my favorite tool, probably the tool that I've used the most, and probably the best and the oldest tool, which is Tangent's Image to Paint Blocks or Paintable Sign. So what's really cool about this is you can upload an image. We'll just use Angela again, and we can click Upload, and then we can download the file. So we'll call this Paint1. I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and add a glow file, which this is not accurate, but we're going to go ahead and use this Angela again and upload. And that's going to be our paint two. Paint two. All right, let's go back to Stormworks. All right, so when we open paint one, we'll see that we have the nice paint blocks all loaded up here. And if we look at them in the other mode, you'll see there's nothing to connect to them. They're just invisible because those are paint blocks, okay? Or paint signs, I guess they're called. All right, so let's open Paint 2. All right, so Paint 2, I went ahead and added a glow file. So what that does is create a base image that it's going to load onto the paint blocks, and then it uses the glow file. So if you were doing an additive paint block like this, let's, I don't know if we can add something on this or it won't show up. Oh yeah, yellow shows up. We can do that, and that's our additive glow. And what Tangent does, which is really nice, is he adds a button, and then if we go into the electricity, we have all the electricity ready to go. We just have to hook it up. Like this. I know, not as fun, especially if you do a larger image, but... Very cool, nonetheless, that he's already added the button for you. And I believe the button is already hooked to all of these, so that is hooked up. So you don't have to do the button to paint block. So I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see. Yeah, see the button's already connected. Really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and find a battery. And hook it right there. And go ahead and grab the electricity. And that's it, I think. Let's go ahead and spawn this. All right, let's turn out the lights. All right, lights are off. Now we turn on the glow, and now we have a glowing sign. Very cool. I don't use this very often for the glowing, but it is an option that you can use. Also, if you haven't watched the tutorial on nose art, you might want to try that. I'm going to go ahead and link it in the top right and in the description below, and you can check those out on how to convert this uh, into nose art for planes. All right, next. All right, so the next tool is the Convert an SVG to Path to Triangles, which is also by Pony. And this allows you to upload a SVG file, which is basically a vector file, and convert it to Lua. So I'm going to just grab something I grabbed off the internet, which is this nice little cloud with an arrow. I have no idea what that's for. But I went ahead and grabbed that just as an example. And what you can see is it generates some code. Here are the generated lines. Not too sure what you can do with those, but you can copy them. Maybe if you know what to do with the code. I don't know what to do with the code. And the other one is to go ahead and grab these two boxes and go ahead and format those into your Lua. So we can test script here, which would take us to the IDE. But what we're going to do is go ahead and grab this code and come over here, paste it. Let's just delete this. Let's see what it does 
but just the first block of code by itself just to get an idea of what the code is doing. All right, so right now we've got some rough line code. And now let's go ahead and grab the second box. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we look over here. Again, I haven't really used this, but this might be cool if you're building some kind of interface uh, using an SVGA file, and then you get all fancy. But we're just gonna go ahead and let's unconnect that one right quick and just paste this in here and see what that generates without the line code. Hit OK and run over here and check it out. OK, seems like we got about the same thing. Interesting. Unless I copy the wrong one, which is possible. Let's grab both and see what they do here. Run over here again and check it out. All right, so it looks good now. Let's use both of the scripts. So what you can see here is we got it over here in the corner and what we can do if we go back over here, we can set our number of points, we can set our precision, which is going to affect uh, how many triangles it creates, and basically this is going to be your resolution. So if you want something, let's see if we can do a bigger file. Let's do, let's do 150, and we're going to go ahead and let's drop this down to 25. All right, so that shows you what it's doing as far as the number of triangles. So if we go back up to 50. Okay, our resolution gets better. We go to 150. Our resolution gets really nice. And I guess, you know, if you could go crazy and go 500, it would probably add a lot more code and you wouldn't see much difference in the pixels. So let's go back down to, say, 100. Which doesn't look bad at all. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the first one. Copy that. All right, that's the first one. Come over here, grab this one. Just by clicking. And grab that and paste that. All right, let's test it. So we should have a larger cloud. There it goes, 150, and you can see the resolution. So the paths are kind of screwed up on this image that I found, but you get the idea of how you can turn SVG into triangles and give you a nice interface. All right, what do we got next? All right, so the next tool, which is not really a tool at all, is a Stormworks server browser. And this one was sent to me and it's just been changing and being added to oh look at that that's me and this is brand new right here it hasn't had this before but it shows the player average shows where the server is the IP address if you click on it you can get a little bit more details of what it's been doing wow he's been adding quite a bit number of players etc etc so very cool um, and you might want to just check this out and if you have a server I don't think you really need to add your server. It seems to be doing it automatically Maybe he's doing this himself not too sure where he's getting this data, but kind of a cool tool for server browsing right, Now it's time for our last tool, which is of course the stormworks hole builder now There is two ways to use this and I'm going to show you the basic way to use it without having to import any 3d models or anything like that So let's go ahead and open it up all right, so here it is. The original purpose for this tool is to build holes, so you don't have to mess with it. You can go ahead and scale it down if you want a smaller hole. There's 82 blocks. Let's do like by two. There's a little tiny boat. And let's see what else we can do. Let's do, let's do like a 0.5. 82 blocks, that's pretty good. How wide? 13 blocks, that's pretty good, okay. Then you go into generation, you go ahead, you can smooth it or no smoothing. Smoothing adds the wedges. So let's go ahead and hit generate. And there we go, we've got our hole. We hit export and save. All right, cool, easy. Once in Stormworks, we can open it up. And now we have a hole that we can go ahead and finish up any way we like, tweak it, make it thicker, etc., etc., and make our boat. So that's one way to use it. The second way to use it, of course, is to go ahead and use a mesh path that opens up an OBG file. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so you have to copy and paste the path and then the file name. It'll load it up. Da -da 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 -da. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And then it will load it. And we can set it right like that. All right, so by default, it's gonna be whatever size the mesh is set to. So what we wanna do is always get it to the size we want. So it depends what you're doing. I like to do it by turning off the smoothing because it makes it faster. And then we can just see how wide this is to get an idea if we're to scale. So say the 109 is probably like 50 blocks wide. Put that back to five probably. 
And then we can go ahead and generate again. And that's going to give you a nice idea of how wide it is. So it's one, two, three, four. So that is not going to work. Four blocks wide is not going to work. So what I usually do is go through and bump it up until I get a nice uh, width to go ahead and put a seat in in the controls. One, two, three, four, five. That works. Go ahead and export. Now we're back in Stormworks. Now we have our plane and we can start building out our 109 using the shape hints like the tail and the wing size and basically the overall length and width. And we can go ahead and look up the details on this 109 and get an accurate uh, definition of how big the wingspan should be and how long the plane should be. You can see down there in the bottom right, it's 46. And we can do that and we can add blocks and delete blocks as needed. But the idea is we get the shape hints for the tail and the wings. And once we're done, we end up with something like, like this. So this started off as an imported 3D model. And of course, after rebuilding much of the plane, we use the shape hints for the tail and the wings and the body, and we get a nice looking plane. So that is it. So that's it for today. Hopefully these tools will help you with your builds. All of the links are in the description below, so you can go check them out and try them out. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.